Let me know when you can when you're about to begin. I'm I'm ready when you are, dude. Alright, I'm good to go. Let's do it. Wait, so we're just going fifty minutes straight with how Rob though? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's plenty of discussion and other stuff. I told him, I was like, look, I'm trying to get it started and get it going. And if he doesn't show up for the first hour, that's fine. We'll like work around it every single session. I'll try to plan around it specifically. The first hour is basically talking and chanting. And so I don't know if you want to goblin around. <laughs> We're not the goblins. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I'm saying. You might not want a goblin, you know, fucking goblin and things around and chanky people. <laughs> You didn't tell anybody, you just stole the dude's staff. <laughs> this is true. You starting? Is it good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay, so it's going, right? I can yeah. hear you. <laughs> the stream is <laughs> starting, dude. Double checking, right? Okay. Hey, Jarrell, is it going? <laughs> good? It's like, nope. yeah, we're, we're good. Going. Is this thing on? <laughs> is this thing on? Just checking? Hello, and welcome, my fellow adventurers, to the Empire of Rules. Before we begin, I have to preference a warning. Before we embark on this adventure, we need to address some of the things within this campaign. Even though it's filled with heroism and magic and camaraderie, and unlike we allies, understand that this adventure is a darker one. We will be delving into darker themes. There will be intense violence here. Horror and survival are one of the aspects, although maybe not initially seen. There may be some moral complexity in this, and I think these elements add depth and some amount of realism or, or realism to a fantasy world. This is a uh, viewer discretion. If you feel at any point the content is distressing or uncomfortable, we encourage you to take the necessary steps to take care of your well-being. Our adventure is meant to entertain and inspire, not to cause distress. For those of you who choose to continue and be brave, uh, understand that this is an epic quest and I hope it is a story worth telling. No, I know it's going to be a story worth telling. Without further ado, we shall begin. Pre who's going to press the start button on the entire course? Click, click, click. So. Dang, we're already taking a break. We haven't no, even no, started. This is the loading screen <laughs> on the. Where's my plane hit? <laughs> <laughs> I gave you one. The immense tiny hunt, remember? Yeah, I know, but that one was after the, the warning. On your last adventure, you arrive at Heptio. After a few interesting discussions with a philosopher and drinking of wine at the dock, you decided to make your way through the whole entire magnitude of Heptios. Heptios being a Greek-inspired city down in the southern coast of the inner sea. The Mediterranean-like landscape gave way to a magnificent city brimming with white marble and blue kind of architecture in the backdrop. A marine city. But you are not here to be navy men. You escaped the pirate life earlier before and got yourself into some interesting adventures. You have met Tasha, the same one with the cauldron, discussed and bartered with her, annoyed her, got cursed by her. But all in all, at the end, made an additional friend and perhaps ally of this powerful shopkeeper. Immediately after venturing out into the marble stones, you encountered a strange individual on the run from the guard. This individual was being chased by a whole entire battalion of guards. Uh, you tracked her down the dock. As you tracked her down to the dock, she procured some kind of strange vessel or some kind of strange artifact on a tiny little ship and it managed to boost the speed of the ship that she was on as she escaped. Afterwards, you came to a strange locale with discussions being had by several elves. These elves, you can tell, were at a heated debate. Heated debate was what to do with a slave master who had an elven slave. These three were of elven descent and perhaps maybe former slaves, perhaps not, but they were, they were of noble character. The conversation quickly devolved into attempting to do something. After the party stepped in, the decision was quickly made to take this to the judges' temple. The temple of judges uh, with Larian, the high elf <coughs> taking lead and you all siding with her. The other two seemed to have taken uh, this is a, an offense and decided to leave. You had procured uh, an unlikely ally for the time being if you attempt to help her with this strange debacle of perhaps uh, judgment. You know that Heptios and the kingdom of Chisanta is one of something of an old empire and it is and known and has been known to be that of a less than stellar morality. 
they own uh, several thousands worth of elven slate. Uh, specifically, Heptios to own more than the other uh, city state. You are now making your way to the Temple of Judges. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what we were doing. <laughs> I added you guys to the second uh, to the second chapter. You guys. Maybe. Wow. Wow. Okay, you approach the Hall of Judges. You see that this place is ornate with magnificent statues everywhere and elaborate stone. You can see that there seems to be statues to very specific individuals and there's people walking to and fro. The guards seem to be annoyed by the sheer amount of citizens that are pestering them outside of the temple. As you kind of look at the stonework and everything and uh, decipher it, you quickly see that uh, Larian takes a step forward and takes the lead, looks at the three of you and, and goes, uh, how much do you know of the Temple of Judges? I'm assuming it's not, correct? I don't know anything. I'm in the same boat as him. Well, I'll uh, be quite crass and quick about it to the point. This is Temple of Judges. Functions as both a temple, a courthouse, and a brothel. Brothel, you say? Uh, correct. Um, That's not very holy. In some places, this is what they revere as holy. I suppose this is what they believe to be holy. I'm not exactly certain. Just know that this is common. Uh, be careful of the smut and everything else inside. Uh, with that, Larian kind of takes a step back and waits for you to kind of decide to walk in or do whatever have you not uh, decide to kind of investigate the areas around, maybe talk to anybody, or you can just step directly inside. Uh, I want to cast Disguise Self on myself. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can do that. And I want to appear as an elf, kind of like Larian, just a male elf i guess sure a second uh goes by you say an incantation a brief uh sea wind whisks around you and uh, no longer a giant eight foot tall fur boat standing there it is a uh, six foot three kind of lanky elf with cool. green green hair <laughs> Uh, Grom, do you wish to do any? Uh, no. I mean, I'm just, I'm fine to just kind of follow everyone inside. All right, take a step inside. It is a little bit more quiet than you would expect. Uh, this kind of gigantic temple seems to be stretched out before you. It almost reminds you of what you would expect of our mall. You see that there's several different areas of this place, and it seems to be decadent, overflowing with some kind of quiet energy. People will talk, but in a more kind of quiet way, and uh, quiet undertone to this place, more than uh, the, the uh, kind of quiet rabble of the... Uh, there is something up ahead that you see that kind of garners your attention here. Oh, I got a, where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? Over here, you can place yourselves here. If you guys want me to token you up, let me know so I can make tokens of your character so they look all nice and everything. Just let me know what kind of borders you want and stuff. Okay. Uh, there is something already kind of at the forefront that you notice way ahead that catches your eye. What the hell is that? Frost giant. <laughs> nope. Even from this perspective, sitting on the left and right side hand pillar, almost talking in a quiet whisper, but that seems to be permeating through the air as they talk. You see two sphinxes. You can immediately tell, even from kind of your perspective, looking up into it, from this uh, white kind of reflecting stone masonry and everything, and the kind of sheen of blue. You can tell one is a andro sphinx, the other one is a gyno sphinx. They're kind of, they seem to be talking with another person uh, that seems to be in front at a table. Hmm. You can also you also notice several interesting things on the left and right hand side. You, you think that there seems to be an apothecary, maybe a bathhouse here, or some other uh, kind of places of worship. You can't exactly tell unless you choose to interact. The main purpose here seems to be that this is a sort of courthouse directly in front. There's a little audience as they talk amongst the, themselves, and there seems to be a steady line of people uh, that are judged by the judges. Okay. Uh, Larian seems to be kind of making her way up the, the steps, but, uh, quick kind of, quick steps and movements seem to kind of stop at the top of the staircase as she waits for you guys. If you kind of want to walk around, you know, you know, the kind of like thing where somebody puts their hands behind their back and kind of just like, wait, well, um, I suppose if you want to walk around or investigate anything you can, uh, the judges are perhaps not in a hurry as she points like her head 
her chin to the line that seems to be going down the steps over. Mm. Uh, I want to go eavesdrop on what the judges are currently talking about. Sure, you take a few, you go up the steps and you kind of walk up and you see in front of you, making your way past some of the guards and there seems to be a clerk. She's a shapely woman with kind of a little bit of a, a toga and to have lavender in her hair. She's accompanied by a scribe. They write on strange little scrolls and they and they wait. Uh, the time here seems to be longer and it's stretched out by the fact that you can almost hear a humming in the back and you think that this is the, the a cone of silence around whatever's brought up and talked about uh, with the judge. Interesting. You can see that the table itself looks it's a marvelous set of set piece of magnificent law and tomes and scrolls and a mess as it's all like scattered across the table everywhere hmm. like and you can probably see that uh there's tomes drinks happy and platters quills you even see a few magical trinkets it is piled on high clerk looks at you Nah, you. Yes, you. Nah. Me? Yeah, the, the elf. What? What do you want? What do you want? You've come here. There, the line. It should be orderly finished soon. Uh, what business do you have with the judge? Uh, you can ask line. my compatriot here. She speaks for me. Okay. Uh, I have. I great. I get to role play with myself. Awesome. <laughs> she Larian takes a step forward and she begins to discuss. Uh, immediately what it's yes i'd like to report an abuse of a slave by a slave master this seems to be um, quite bad he injured her heart playing hand and everything and you can see <laughs> as the quill begins to write and the scribe writes and she goes yes 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 uh well it seems that it's going to tie judges have time for whatever this debacle is i suppose the you do know that probably on the lower and just happening across the city uh larry immediately kind of you can see bristles a little bit she goes uh no it's not i'm going to make sure that judges hear at least today about what has occurred here she goes yes very well everybody wants their case heard today uh and she kind of uh the, the clerk kind of goes like this <laughs> You do know that it typically takes a little bit more waiting and patience, strong word, though. And yes, I'm sure. And uh, you could tell that Larian's becoming agitated. You could attempt to intervene, but uh, it seems that uh, with this gesture, you can roll an insight. Uh, all right, I will roll insight then to here. Got a plus two to that. First actual roll of the, what do we got? 13. Okay, you can kind of tell that this gesture is almost universal and you can tell it means something to do with coinage or tribute teeth. Mm. I want to take a look at the table. Is there anything more expensive than anything I got? Yes and no. There are things that are like some of the things more expensive, uh, uh, like a few of the trinkets perhaps. <laughs> You see mm -hmm. one fine looking uh, trinket that looks like a blue orb and like a necklace, like blue orb necklace. But some of the things look cheaper. There's like literally half eaten grapes wine. So. All right. I'm going to put two pieces of my rations down. Oh, she, she looks, uh, roll, roll persuasion. Persuasion? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, okay. Minus okay. one, minus one. Uh, well, she looks at the rations that you have and she goes, quiet, indeed, very well. And she goes like this and she mm -hmm. scribes something. You are an interesting bunch. I'll let you through. Go ahead, stand in line. You, uh, the judges should call you. And Larry kind of looks at you and she mounts. Mm -hmm. uh, you step into the line. Tommy, Grom, are you doing anything? I mean, I was, I was following through, uh, but I was also scrolling all the way up into the records to figure out how much gold we had left them <laughs> all together. And we got about 200, if I am correct. Yeah, I'm not trying to use no gold right now. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm just, I, I did not work. remember. So yeah, yeah, I did not remember. That's why I was like looking. I was like, because uh, <clears throat> in case we needed to pay, I know how much we could fork over pretty much. Um, You see that uh something matches up with the teeth and the offering. Grom, you look to one of the little kind of scri inscribed on the uh, stone marble. You see that one of the law with teeth and off. Those who seek judgment or favor from the gods must provide teeth and or offerings to the value of these can vary based on those as well. Uh, but it can ensure justice and divine favor are accessible to all. So you think that is what had helped you get Judge Hodge. Music is off and reset the music. Pause, give me a second. Loading, loading. Nope, you guys hear this music, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. So these two judges, none other than two giant sphinx on the left and right hand side. You can't almost even tell as you begin to step into the 
kind of sphere of silence and the world around you deafens even more. If they're a femoral stone or some kind of projection or reflection of the upper planes, you have no idea why they are, what brought them. The one on the right says, step forth to be judged. The one on the left says, present thy case. Their eyes kind of lock in. Wait, are we already up? You're already up. Oh shit, I was trying to see who else was being judged before us and kind of gauge how they've been judging today you but, you wish to let somebody else go in front there is yeah, a line. okay yeah. um see if they're like harsh <laughs> judgment okay okay uh you see you see another kind of uh not maybe perhaps voluptuous but beautiful woman you would say walk up right and uh another gentleman walk be kind of a high proprietor maybe perhaps some kind of judge another judge of like the ethics of this place or maybe even perhaps uh like a like a priest of sort, and he looks, he looks, and he goes, Fair judge, I present the case of this harlot. And he points to the woman, and he goes, This woman defiled the gods. She blasphemies against all the gods of Fey Ruin. She calls them quacks behind the veil, and the fact that they offer no aid besides some divine intervention, which amounts to Jack Diddley squat. Smite her. Uh, the woman kind of has her arms crossed, and she looks up at, and she looks at him, and she looks up, and, uh, the guy knows Sphinx looks. Well, what say you? What is your ca uh, the case has been presented? The uh, the Andrew Sphinx said. What is your counterpoint? Okay, I have a pretty good counterpoint to this. Um, I can blasphemize because they bless. Look how beautiful I am. <laughs> uh, the judges kind of look at each other and they go, "Is beauty an echo of godliness?" They deliberate. He found not guilt. And <laughs> a second later. A second later, the woman kind of looks and just smirks. Well, very well. I'm gonna go continue blasphemizing the gods, and she kind of like walks mm. away. As man, kind of, you can see this. This is, this is unjust. And and the judges kind of look at each other and they go, "The point has been made. This woman is blessed by the god because of her beauty. <laughs> Therefore, we will let it go." And she kind of just walks. Step forth to be judged. Shit. Present thy case. Uh, you see both of the sphinxes look at you guys. Um. I gesture over to Larian and shoo her she, forward. <laughs> yeah, she was the one determined to speak with. Yeah. Okay. She just got her into the club. <laughs> I, it, pretty, pretty good job. Uh, give me a second. I gotta pull up the Loading. 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 Uh, persuasion. Oh shit! Okay, she begins to spin a tale of uh, injustices and things that have occurred to the elf, and perhaps uh, that the the master has to present uh, some form of indignation or to undo the justices, especially uh, dealt by by him. And the judges kind of shake, uh, nod, and they continue to nod, and they go, because this is an institution here, he isn't correct in what he has done. However, the mistreatment seems to be that of debate. A fine will be issued to the proprietor of the harp player. A fine of a hundred gold shall be inflicted. And she goes, a hundred gold? Are you stupid? And, 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 and they kind of- <laughs> And immediately they both kind of their eyes flare up for a second and they go silence in unison oh, and she kind of immediately shuts up. Dumb duck. <laughs> Gonna insult them in front of them. That's dumb. Perhaps, perhaps there could be an exchange. Listen, you wish for judgment and proper retaliation. We can provide. We can see that there is something strange here between you three and the gob back. <laughs> As you can see the uh, Gyno Sphinx turn her kind of stone, almost like head, all the way in the corner, and like the glints of her eyes almost like dilate like a cat as she looks at the strange little goblin over there, Gustavlin, doing his goblin stuff. Um, do they have some sort of like, I don't know, trial by fighting or some shit? Trial by combat? Yeah. They look They look at both of you. Or is that like outlawed here? It is not out. You think, uh, but you can ask. I'll ask. So, wait, wait, that's not my voice in this character. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I'm an elf right now. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Is there, by chance, trial by combat held on this side? You are correct in your assessment, Furbog. There hey, is trial by elf. combat here. Not only that, there are other payment and discussion. You four, five, perhaps are more in line to judge more fair than others. We have a proposition. Should you be willing to undertake, you can attempt to do the trial by combat in the arena of glory. Or you can take on an additional task for us and... We will be certain that we will come to this abuse. I of lean this. over to Grom and I just say, Are they bribing us? We I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I feel like they're doing more of like an option for a ruling to change the hundred gold something more severe. How does that work? That's not true judgment. I have a question, little furball. What makes you think I'm a furball? Very I'm well. True stuff. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Thing, that if you could see the flows of time and bring about proper judgment, you would not make proper morale. You but wish for proper judgment on this user. We can bring it. But in doing so, we request your aid. What? But if your job is to be a judge, why would you change your judgment based off of what we do? Like, if we choose not to help you, he just walks away with a slap on the wrist. But if we help you, then what? He dies? No. Not exact. There are things you do not understand within the causality of time. There are ways to punish people now or late. We for punishment late at a greater expense. He has, since the problem is, in his eyes, he is not. You mortals, your morality stands of taste more than any. And we see it as absolute. There are things that can be employed. True judgment. You wish for true judge to come the abuse. We can assure that such things can happen. Otherwise, simply escape with teeth and offerings to the god. I just think mean thoughts i don't say anything i just think mean <laughs> thoughts <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I guess I gesture over to uh, to Larian and ask her what she thinks. What 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 should we do? Um, well, if you think stand in the arena of valor, it could perhaps be a good thing. But I would maybe perhaps advise against it because um, it is known that wealthier proprietors of Haptios are known to recruit powerful adventurer coin. You are powerful, but they usually implore. They'll literally hire out another adventure town to have them fight and win battle. Gladiators and adventurers are revered here, and so some of the ones that could fight very well are recruited and paid top gold. You could perhaps take them, uh, or them, whoever they may be, but it might it might be a little bit more difficult. I am willing to hear their case or their offering. I do not know what creatures of absolute law or judgment, their morality or whatever they attempt, the way they judge, it's strange. I, I normally don't go to them. Stay away from the laws of the city. Not my business. I just decided to do something in this case. Because it was an elf. Correct. I uh, also uh, don't know if the arena would be the best bet, especially if this would occur today. Uh, as you can see, I kind of lift up uh, a little bit of like my, one of my robes to show where I got impaled <laughs> about a couple hours back. <laughs> that is true. It's only been a few hours. <laughs> uh, I'm not in the best condition on this day. Wait a second. You were the, the people that fought the strange culprit that escaped on the boat, right? You heard about that? Uh, of course I did. It was the talk of the town. It found its way. Pretty that was fast. That was like two hours ago. Literally, it was people were talking about it as they were walking up from the docks. There was a random hooded individual running all through the rooftops, being chased by other adventurers and guards. Made her escape. That was you. Uh, the judges kind of tapped their paws and like curl their tails in like a cat in annoyance um well i guess we do whatever they need us to do excellent you shall accept our off step four we shall present to you the crest of judge and you see a second later their eyes kind of flare up and a little like seed seem kind of come down from a ray of sunlight and begins to condense glow blue and sapphire like and it lands in one of your hands go to everyone okay wow you guys got the crest of judgment now hang on Yeah. All right. Since you have chosen to accept this quest, we shall offer you this crest. <laughs> Bars. Now, you must understand that you have a week's time to deliberate this. There is something foul happening all across and beneath Chisante. Chisante, you must understand that we must have you look into the wildlife around you. There's a creature that plagues the countryside. You must slay this and attempt to discover what is hunting our caravans and other citizens outside the city wall. Bring information back and we shall offer proper judgment to the defiler. So do you want information or do you want the creature's head? It matters not. The crest will see all. Ah. Well, okay. Uh, I put the crest on um, Larian. Me? You're going to make me wear this bloody thing? Well, it's your idea to come here, and now we got to do this quest, so yeah. You know what? You're right. You're right. You bring up a good point. She puts it on, like, you're not even reluctant. Your, your goblin friend is still asleep. If you want to, perhaps, maybe um, explore Heptios, look around before we set off. It could 
it could be perhaps wise. Um, maybe ask around of strange things. Uh, I'm I'm in exactly no hurry. Uh, as the judges kind of look at you uh, four, and they go, you have seven days to complete this, a week's time. No, apologies, apologies. Retcon that. You have 10 days, a week's <laughs> time. Okay, right. and with that, the cone of silence kind of and the, the sound of other people inside to kind of overtake everything again. On the day of mid- On the day of mid- <laughs> Stop, no bully. Okay, uh, and with that, you all step aside and the next person takes a step forward and you hear, step forth to be judged. Present thy cake. Yeah, and it's okay. freaking Bob Robbo over here. He stole the fucking tributes. <laughs> Gustavlin, what are you doing? Just leave it, Gustavlin. You'll need it. Okay. Um, you all can you can talk amongst yourselves for a brief moment, uh, kind of deciding what you want to do. This is a uh, seems to be temple and also uh, a brothel and also a courthouse. So you can perhaps find something interesting to do here. If not, you can wait outside your call. I'm gonna mute myself and you guys will play amongst yourselves for a split second. Well, Grom, how do you feel? about this mission i feel like it's not too crazy i mean as far as i know we just have to figure out what is hunting these caravans so if we just pretend to be a caravan we could potentially catch it are we trying to catch it or kill it well i mean catch what it is as opposed to i mean maybe if it comes to it if we can't outrun it can't get away or can't uh just safely discover it it may need to come to that but it kind of is just uh what happens, what happens, you know? Gotta, <laughs> gotta find out. We're <laughs> gonna find out. All right. So we have made our decision on our plan. <laughs> okay, what's the plan? We're gonna disguise ourselves as a caravan heading into town. And we're gonna fuck around and find out what this thing is. Okay, uh, do you wish to go in? Are you gonna stay inside this temple? Or are you gonna walk around Heptios? Or what, where are you guys gonna go? I'm, I'm gonna fuck around in this temple for a little bit, unless unless you wanna head out, Grom. I mean, I, I'm i cool to hang out here. I, I don't really have any plans. Okay. I wanna go over to wherever these priests are hanging out and see who they are worshiping. Uh, Sure. So over here seems to be the more kind of bathhouse and elaborate kind of area. You would probably chalk this up to some form of brothel F thing. You're not exactly certain. And to the right hand side, you think there is a more uh, uh, kind of temple esque. And so you can you can see that there seems to be some sort of worship and everything. So left brothel, right uh, temple middle place court i'm gonna go right trying to get caught up in no brothel action with no money <laughs> with 200 gold pieces man <laughs> yeah it's the party funds <laughs> gustavo has got a bunch too it's okay yeah he has all my gold bars <laughs> okay uh let me see so you immediately uh, kind of walk over and you can see that there is uh of course there is as you guys know in this world right there's the twin goddesses being worshipped already there's saloon and char and their domains are not what they are in the normal stuff because it's cold brewing uh saloon and char seems to be at odds like in, like the first two gods that you see at the, t- at the temple of the goddesses and then you can see that there's a trinity of nature and then there's their dark trinity further in the back like all the way in the back in the shadows and the light trinity seems to have like a little ah, beacon of light shining on it and you can see that there is a bunch of other different gods kind of throughout the, the region area. Some that are not exactly bestowed or directly worshipped, maybe like off in the distance. Some of them like Timora, perhaps, the goddess of luck is occasionally there. Okay. Um, I want to walk over to the depiction of Saloon. Okay. Uh, Saloon is there. She seems to be uh, the, the moon dancer and everything. And she, she's holding up the, her moon kind of like this and almost glowing. The statue seems to be almost glowing, ethereal. There's like spider webs of ruins kind of on her. Interesting. Um, I'll just say a slight prayer to her. I don't really pray to her, but you know, it just seems like her magic is being favored at the moment. So I'll say a prayer okay. to her. Maybe that'll help something. Help our journey, our next quest out. You just say a prayer? Yeah, it's a generic prayer. Okay. Oh say dear Salune, I pray to you. <laughs> yeah, you you say you say the thing. It, you feel a slight little warmth tinge, it, it kind of bubble up from somewhere deep in your heart. Nothing crazy, but it's a little spark of something. Cool, Grom. Okay. What are you doing, sir? <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna be chilling in the like near like 
watching Blue Stoblin be a goblin probably in this little fountain area or just watch him be a menace. Do you see him? He's just like sleeping. He's like, <laughs> it says his name in his sleep. <laughs> he speaks in third person in his sleep. Uh, I, feel, I feel like there's nothing here that is clerically enough aside from the apothecary, but I don't need to spend money. So. Mm-hmm. Plus, you we don't got Tasha to, to go back to if we need to spend money. You don't want to talk. You don't want to go see if there's anything about the the uh, other gods up there. You are a cleric. Yeah, but uh, just by Tasha's uh, discussion, or sorry, no, it was the old man on the ship, right? The man in the tattered clothes, the pondering man. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just by the discussion with him, I feel like it's not common that Malar or anything would be around here. You make a make a, a religion check. Eleven plus uh, lots of stuff. Plus religion, two. Thirteen. One. So you you walk up and kind of look around a, in the general vicinity, and you can see that there is the twin goddesses initially. But, uh, then you see there's the, the the light trinity and the primordial pantheon, and in, in kind of towards the middle section, you see three gods like almost a statue all together. And you can see that it's the Trinity of Nature, and Malar is represented. You can see that there's Sylvanas, the Great Oak. You can see there's Ch- uh, Chaunta. Oh, fuck you, say pause. <laughs> All right, uh, and then you can see uh, Malar is there too, and it's like a it's like a Trinity of, of of the Nature Three, right? And then it looks like the Oak is standing kind of off to one side, and then uh, the a beast of kind of strange lycanthrope and like uh, primal energy is like standing in another one, and then you can see that. Uh, the, the, the goddess of agriculture and like the good part of maybe kind of uh there's like a giant wheat stalk that's just br- brushing in the wind it almost looks like a statue but you can tell that it's a like, movie it's like chantia chantia okay i'll go up and uh, put uh, some food rations i guess under the one for millar then and then uh what kind of food yeah, just the, i mean the typical ones that we got from because i think that's all we typically have is the ones in the bag of holding for like the everybody on the ship okay so they're kind of generic and, um, if there is like one that is like dried meat or something like that, I'd probably assume that the meat would probably be the best. Thank you, Mama. You, as you kind of drop the the offering to the god, you immediately kind of notice something. You notice it's uh, you notice that there's like a primal spark, and you can hear the the the, the pumping of your of your heart in your ears, and you can almost hear the wild kind of rush of the hunt for a split second. You get a you get a plus two on your next attack. Damn. I, I. If you if you use your paw or your teeth, you get a plus five. They probably honestly do about the same. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Do the lions get early on in the claw attack? I don't know. I don't. I don't. It's kind of weird. I, I would expect. Oh, you, they they do get claw, but they don't get the bonus climb. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Like Mufasa is. Yeah. <laughs> they have, you know he died, right? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I I can Mufasa because <laughs> I don't get the bonus to climb. Yeah, I get the claw attack. Okay. Uh, you can talk to Lar- uh, Larian if you want too while you guys are waiting there, or explore the city while we wait for the last player to load in. <laughs> I'll get to know where Larian's from. Where, where are you from, Larian? Well, originally, <clears throat> from the Moonshade. Really? Yeah, the Moon. You've, have you heard of Most people haven't heard of them. They're a backwater place. Um, I'm from an isle called Gwyneth. Really? Yeah. Can I roll um, history? Go ahead, roll history. I want to see if I know the tales of Gwyneth. Dang it! I don't know shit about it! <laughs> Um, technically speaking, my uh, lineage, well, my all the lines of, of even my two former adventuring friends of, of, were of noble blood. Although, don't let one of the, one of them is a bit of a how do you say black sheep of their of the family line because uh, he's a Springsteen. But from what I remember, I think the Springsteens are more darker thinning, and and come from with golden eyes or something like that. He seems to be more fair, so I think he was adopted. But I'm not a. Uh, I don't know the full Springsteen line. I just know that there was some noble hero about a couple hundred years ago by the name of Springsteen. Damn right. Uh, and then. Uh, I want. I want to ask her about the ruling leaders of uh, Gwyneth, since my character is my old character is still out there. Well, um, I'm sorry to say this, but my family line was taken from Gwyneth at least over a millennia ago. No. Can exactly say um, whatever you are asking about. I don't. I don't remember. I haven't. I just. I know that's where I hail from. I know there's a bunch of fake creatures on Gwyneth. There's a magnificent queen that rules it, and then there is some kind of. There's some giants there now. I don't know much of it besides that. I. I just. Just sounds like my home now. Damn it! My underworld fell apart. So, uh, what brought your uh, your I guess party here? 
before uh, they kind of fell apart. We've been, been trying to present our cases about a few strange things happening to some of the Elgin communities outside the city. And uh, perhaps even more interesting is the fact that um, more elves are disappearing, but nobody seems to know or care. And because you, they are lower in the social hierarchy, nobody seems to care at all. And maybe maybe somebody that counts and, and teeth all his merchandise and everything uh, understands, but there's, there's so much here, of, of, of nobody tallies the numbers, but we, we remember, we have long memories. It's been an, an uptick of missing elven communities and missing elves across all of Chisong. Mm. And it's it's been increased as of late. Um, ever Any... since the turn of the millennia, uh, after the return of magic, there's been a lot more elves going missing. And we've decided to track it down and group ourselves together and perhaps maybe buy or purchase some land and purchase a bunch and free our people. But the way our, my compatriots wanted to go about it was one wanted to all out warfare, the other one wanted to do nothing and just wait. So they can go fuck themselves. They can go fuck themselves all the way to the rhythm. So I, mm. It seems like this has struck a chord with you very deeply. Is there anybody of importance that you lost? No, not exactly. Can't, can't really recall. And we moved around so much and from city state to city state and we, we had friends and family, but I suppose I, I wasn't very close to them, so I can't really say. It was more of a, we survived because we could and banded together, but it wasn't exactly a familiar relation, if you understand what I, what I am seeing. It was more of a, I'm okay with this at the moment. The moment I was able to buy my freedom and leave, I left. How old is Larian? Uh, you can attempt to roll an insight, but elves, you can never fucking tell. <laughs> insight! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> 18, 18? 20 total. Uh, you can tell she's exactly 77. Oh, she's young. It, you can almost <laughs> tell. You can tell almost down the, uh, some, something kind of clicks w with the two and, you're, and you see that there is a faint kind of glowingness of magic around her. And, and you just you just shoot in the dark, you, you say 72 and she's like, right on. Uh, me, me, Thamior, and Erevin were born as magic returns to the realm. I don't know if that has any significance to do with anything, but that is what it was. All right, uh, I'm gonna write this stuff down because this is juicy stuff. Juicy fruit. Okay, so I guess there. this is time for a loading screen while everybody kind of discusses points. We're gonna test this out. All right. Uh, Larry, you see like her sh like grabbing one of your arms and kind of like shaking. Hey, hey, are you okay? You both zoned out for a second. Is are you all right? Is everything what do you okay? mean? I've been here the whole time. No, you haven't. I've been trying to talk to you for the last five minutes. Both of you just zoned out. No, we just tuned you out. There's a difference. Oh, that's <laughs> weird, don't you think? So, get on with it. What do you want to talk about? Yeah, what were you saying? Well, I was, I was saying that well, before you all zoned out on me, I was saying that there is some strangeness afoot. Um, oh, point of point of interest. I don't know if you know this. There's there's some weird sea creature right off outside the in the bay. Where you know where all those fishermen are? And they fish on those little islands, the one that's kind of steamy. Yeah, there's there's a strange creature there. I don't, I have no idea what the hell it is, but there is something there. Perhaps it's also worth examining. I don't. Um, I guess the local wildlife is a little wild. Now. I say we deal with one mysterious creature at a time, since we already have to find this one that's attacking the caravan. I bet you that creature's name is Mister. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how much do you know about uh, Chistanka? Do you know all the... Do you know the history of it? No. Bless I, I assume you don't really care to know them. Well, I guess we can go outside into Heptios and start making our way towards uh, the outside of the city. Grab your uh, friend. <laughs> I, gra I grab Gustavlin by the collar. Yeah, Gustavlin, man. <laughs> 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 All right, we drag him out, head out. Hold if this thing ever decides to As in game noises in the background. Okay, you are back outside in the column, columnar and kind of marble stone and a, a, a magnificent uh, marine city, Heptio. Stand right outside the, the general kind of temple of judges and you are just waiting for your friend to wake up with you on with your general adventure. Uh, if you decide, you can continue uh, going towards the strange creature attacking the caravan, or you could continue to peruse the city. Your call, carouse. I call it carouse. Um, I will carouse. I guess. I, I don't think we should take on a mysterious creature if we're not at full force. <laughs> Even oh. though a goblin isn't much help. But... Is there a cleric that I could pay to heal my wounds for a cheap price? 
Yes, you can literally go back inside and. Have <laughs> I mean, I just want my HP full. I'm struggling. Goose Goblin. <laughs> uh, you, as you walk in, you hear your goblin friend waking up. You are, you can go and have your wounds paid for. Right, Goose Goblin is here. <laughs> A strange thing occurs as you, your friend Grom walks back into the temple. You look to like over your shoulder and you feel something squirming, and immediately the goblin wakes up, climbs down. Uh, you are in front, the goblin. You awaken be in front of the temple of judges. Larian seems to be standing there, looking a little bit confused. It's Grom, your Leonin friend, walk back into the temple. You have completely I'm missed the first part. <laughs> no, I'm being framed. Nobody's blaming you for anything. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna lie to him. I wanna lie to him real quick. He's been out of it. This Doblin, they got you on charges of theft. We had to go in there and clear your name. <gasps> you did this for me? Yes, Goose Doblin. Oh, dang. But I mean, in, in I, order to I, do this, I had we had to use the rest of our gold. We had to bribe the judges. Just, like, just so you know, you're talking to an elf right now. Oh yeah, I'm a elf. I, I I cast this guy itself on myself. <laughs> so you probably don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking forgot about that. Probably. I owe you my life. You <laughs> friend with the other elf. Yeah, you don't you don't understand. The your furball friend died trying to save you. Well, I didn't really like him anyways. Roll deception, bro. Okay. At advantage. At advantage, bet. Go. Come on, titties. Okay. Uh, minus, minus one. So 15 total. Gustav Lint, roll an inside check. Grom, you walk back into the temple. And as you walk back into the temple, the uh, uh, different clerics and everything around the general area. And you walk up to one of them and Shit. discuss prices. And within a matter of maybe two or three minutes, the prices are worked out. And uh, you are told 25 gold pieces with 50 gold pieces after the first cure. So, wait, I'm currently paying per cure wound. <laughs> Correct. Per spell. Is he a, are they life clearing? Can't they just heal him like completely? That, that's expensive, my friend. You what? don't just get free healing. You can choose to take a long rest if you want. Well, um, what if, uh, do you guys work for the city for, as healers? <laughs> the city no we work for the divine and the temple do you heal soldiers a lot yes the guards correct are you well, are you I, I i heal soldiers today save you from so <laughs> you? can i can i get a little uh cleric discount cleric <laughs> they look at you okay Kill 16, 17 hit. Okay, Gustavlin. Okay, we're, we're solid. What? Uh, Larry looks at you and goes, Why were you asleep the whole time? You missed the conversation with the two giant sphinx. Well, clearly they had nothing important to say. You know what? You're kind of right. I didn't really like them that much. Me either. Um, Grom, you walk back out. Do you want me to fill him in or are you going to fill him in? Uh, Gustavlin, we uh, pretty much have to find a beast outside the town that's hunting care of TLDR. Find a what? Uh, a monster or a beast or a group of people. Somebody's attacking caravans that are coming into the city. Why? So, we have so much money now. What do we have to do? I got all this money. Where did you get money? From, from, from the Minotaur? From I, the Minotaur? I told, what? Stop when I told you, you we had to he use was, all the money to clear your name. He was the Minotaur and I was the halfling. No. <laughs> Clendonius, you remember? Wait, so does he about? does he see through my disguise self since he rolled 18 on insight? Yeah, he sees. He sees. Fuck it, I just dispel it then. <laughs> <laughs> the sea wind literally just kind of blows away like like a bunch of leaves being blown away off a tree. You just see a giant fur bowl. Somehow the leaves blown away and you oh, become oh, larger. Oh, oh, oh. I meant what I said. I hate. <laughs> After all we've been through, just so you know, we're broke again. Oh yeah. Dodge it. <laughs> Well, hold, hold on a second. We got this, and she presents a strange crest. She goes, this should aid us, and then it seems the Sphinx Judge want us to do something that is investigate some interesting things. So I, perhaps we could go about and find something. I think it is time. It's time we go and um, become a caravan, I guess? Create a caravan? Are we a caravan if we're just walking with things? Uh, I feel like we need some kind exactly. of wagon. Yeah. <laughs> As you stand in front of this uh, temple and everything, you you get the feeling that perhaps it might not be necessary and maybe you could just venture forth and you guys find just a with your own kind of a, adventure uh, perhaps maybe we should just take a step outside and 
figure out what we can find in the, in the wilderness ourselves. If you'd like, we could rest up, perhaps, if you're feeling a little ill or something like that. She points at you, Grom, but I don't think it'd be that bad of a thing to head out. Yeah, I feel like Grom is the only one who really got fucked up in that last battle. Well, I feel like a new person. Well, Grom's really weak, so it only makes sense. <laughs> I chose not to kill him that one time. Is that what happened. Him? All right. Um, okay, so. I think that happened before uh, you woke up from stop. Was it a dream? <laughs> well, let's go. Come on. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, taking a short rest. How do you like the sh uh, loading screen, Stoblin? As the game is loading, I'm not gonna have you guys. Uh, it's pretty sh points of discussion too, should they be needed. But otherwise, I'm just gonna continue. Uh, you fo- While well, there's gaming noises in the background and people are talking to me, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's gamer. new, man? This is literally us at your house. Honestly, this is truth. <laughs> I guess nothing, nothing's changed. We just, I'm waiting for the Biha to come in. <laughs> so you begin to make your way outside the city as you begin to make your way outside the, the mediterranean climates kind of bustle in front of you there's some, there's a decent amount of vegetation it seems that there's a lot more rainfall specifically you begin to kind of approach uh some of the trade road. the road and kind of pavement here seems to be that of mostly dirt you also notice the fact that it takes about a day's travel for you to get outside so you gain the benefits of a, sh of a long rest as you continue to trek through kind of the wilderness and you consume one thing of ration on the second day as you are traveling investigating asking around attempting to discover what is happening in this countryside you come to a strange caravan overturned as not overturned you you come to a, a a strange locale that you know that some sort of action that has occurred specifically you have heard and rumors of every uh people avoiding this specific little mountain pass and stream in this general vicinity um you find yourself low no i don't know if that kind of fixed the sound issue or not but i think my uh camera was the one that was picking up the audio yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not hearing anything anymore. All right, cool, cool. Okay, you can place yourselves here, wherever you guys want. Yeah. <clears throat> These rumors of the strange creature in battles have led you here, specifically outside the town, in a more car carnivorous kind of little forest. There's a stream running down the mountain. It seems to be somewhat quiet, and, and you are in a higher latitude than normal. Latitude? No, you are in both latitude and just higher in general altitude. There we go. You were in a, you're in a higher altitude. The road and everything here seems to be less traveled, but there's evidence of something that has occurred here. Hmm. Something has occurred here. Are there is there any wildlife around, like birds and shit? Yes, there seems to be wildlife around here. Uh, I'm gonna go speak with some of the birds. Okay. The red right now is representing the stuff. Darian is just kind of walking around himself, not understanding what's going on. Just like, I have no idea. This is all strange to me. I haven't, ah, I'm curious. Do you, are, have you dealt with large beasts before? She turns to all of you. Well, Sablum, have you dealt with large beasts before? I am a large beast. <laughs> I mean, if you really look at us, like, you got a big-ass furball and a big-ass lion, dude. Like, I'm pretty sure we are a large beast. Why do you have... It's not about the size, and it's more about, like, you know, like, what you can do with it. Okay, I put your character down, even though your character is... Why is your character blank? He's blank, guy. Does he have an up... He hasn't made his character yet. Okay, you can interact with the area however you see fit in this little mountain stream on a pass that nobody has traveled for quite some time on an invisible mountain. Um, you can literally grab any goblin picture and drop it if you want. Don't make, don't make me. I'll look up a raunchy hot goblin picture and Ew. throw it down. I want a, a hot dog goblin. A hot dog goblin? Yeah, a hot goblin. Um, I'm speaking with the birdies of the of the area. Uh, okay, uh, we'll handle animal for me. Tweet, 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 tweet. Uh, handle animal. What do I have for that? Uh, it's gonna be a total of nine. Okay. The birds look at you and they kind of, as you speak to them, they, they go, trouble, lots of trouble, lots of trouble, big creature, big fight, ambush things, stole things, yes, fled there, and kind of points up the, points this way? Points up, points up the mound, and you can see that there's a, what looks like like some kind of cobblestone up on the side of the mound in a little kind of nook and cranny area. You can see the little stronghold like visible out on the outline of the, of the horizon. Uh, the birdies tell me there's trouble up ahead. Me, 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 me. That's you. Put some bass in your voice, Gustavlin, when you talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Drop three octaves, please. <laughs> As I pick Gustavlin up and put him on my shoulders. Ah. 
Okay, uh, I guess this spot has now been checked out. And the mark it off. Where's my little drawing lighting? No, off. Free hand. Beep, beep, beep. I will roll perception. You don't have see. to. There's two, two, a couple interesting things. Uh, you walk up and you can see from this specific kind of stone, there are giant needles or barbs of chitinous material jettisoning out of the stone. Huh. Um, wow! Can I roll survival to see what that is? Or nature or something? You're called nature or survival. I mean... Unless what, unless somebody else got better nature or survival than me. I got a plus Probably four. Probably not. Um, no, I got zero. Right. I got tons of nature! All right, I'll roll. God damn it! It's a total of seven. I don't know what the yeah. fuck this shit is. Uh, you have a feeling this is probably some kind of aquatic creature. I think this is a creature of the sea. It has some aqua, uh, 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 eight, uh, like the barbs are made of chitin, it seems, and they're not like spongy or fleshy. So I probably think they're some kind of uh, sea creature that perhaps maybe maybe made its lair up top here, or got up here somehow. Somehow, some sea creature made its way through the forest and claimed land up here. That's what I say. <laughs> um, just by like a like looking at it, how deep does this little river go? Is it like a shallow little pond? It, it, or? It's it's a little stream. It's not that deep. Like look, you can, you can see the bottom of it running clear, like like in between the the, the sediment and other things that, that's like running off the side of the mountain. You can tell that it's it's maybe like six. Okay, and then um, pew, pew. I'm guessing there's no like footprints or like yeah. You haven't seen any footprints so far. Let's go check this out. Okay, you approach and it looks like there's some kind of mound here or some kind of dug up dirt. Uh, like like some kind of like a little mound. Is it soft dirt? Yeah, it seems to have been like like something like dug a bunch of crap on top probably like maybe seven feet in in diameter total maybe a little bit more um i removed the dirt see what it was buried travelers merchant whatever it is it's dead bodies now um uh, you count for probably three corpses decaying in the ground maybe uh, some amount of flesh ripped off and eaten huge chunks from them uh seems to be a cache of sort or a stack of the, whatever the creature killed this might be where the creature hoards its food whatever creature this is do, it's saving uh, this food for later do you well i've i've heard of mountain lions and and uh mountain lions and perhaps maybe other creatures that do this uh but i couldn't exactly tell maybe wolves dire wolf but like i said this is a creature of the sea i've never seen a creature of the sea do this what makes you think it would be a creature of the sea there it kind of looks at you with the, it seems almost like not possible. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. Grom? Uh, this is outside of my realm of expertise. Uh, can I like reach in and try to pull out the cache and see what's inside it? Absolutely, sir. Go ahead. I you, do that. You begin, <laughs> to, you begin to kind of take a bunch of the stuff and, and dig it up, like almost like a cat. Uh, and you find a few interesting things. You find a wooden flute that's broken and kind of... <laughs> shattered you find half of a some long forgotten map like ripped apart as you pull it out of like the stash of the clothing of the man a pendant of a white stone carved with an elven face uh you find a couple of copper bells and grain thorn vine you think those would probably be worth something uh other than that you don't really find any information about the whatever uh these people were you, you did like an initial look you just kind of pull out the corpses look around smack them around like d reach into their pockets pull up something but most of it seems to be like some of the stuff that they had on maybe like a, like even the daggers and weapons you think were just destroyed and scattered not visible anymore here did you say that they were like bloodied and tattered and shit absolutely they look like they've been ripped apart all right like they're they're not all eat Okay, so does it look like they were like clean cuts, like like claws, or does it look like make a medicine check? Uh, hey Grom, you want to make a medicine <laughs> check? <laughs> As he inquires this out loud, I'll uh, investigate a little further. Uh, twenty-one total. Okay, um, you can see that a certain part of the flesh, you can see uh, claw marks. You count seven cl razor claws, and you can tell that in the part that they hid hit they like eviscerated clean, like clean cuts to the bone like mm. past the rib tape and like slashed it so the claws were masked any any luck grom um it looks like whatever did the huge and has serrated did like claws uh owlbear and the, the the cuts are really deep owlbear i use my knowledge of owl bears to know that they don't have seven claws correct they do not uh gustavo what do you know anything or I know that bears don't swear. Nobody cares. They can't get in chairs. 
Goblin, do you want this flu? <laughs> I, I blow the, um, I have my, my, on my side, my, uh, the little bag thing I got from, uh, Tasha's place, the, uh, the pipes of something or other, and I blow into it. Pipes of haunt. Okay, you blow into it, uh, it does the effect that's supposed to. What is, what is it supposed to do? You never told me. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to be haunted, oh no. It's probably on the shopping list. Yeah, uh, no. It was really expensive. I don't remember where the shopping list is. There you go, buddy. Where is it? Ha ha ha. Uh, as you blow into it, it kind of, it echoes across uh, the little landscape and the mountainside of here. I get to roll something. I mean, where is it? Uh oh. Let him cook. I fail. <laughs> <laughs> creature it's way more dangerous than that so i gotta scroll down wait no i meant the creatures don't worry it's something crazy or scary you guys are gonna be okay yeah okay thing is oh, yeah, i'm not like eight people. Part them, so i say i just read the first line where it says each creature but i didn't know that aren't hostile automatically succeed oh fuck. uh how loud did you play the the pipes to stop them i was mainly singing and then it was kind of at the end like <laughs> but moderately all right, moderate. Okay. A, a quiet yell. Okay, a quiet yell. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> like a little I'm gonna bit say. Of a shout, I would say. I feel like it would echo in a forest. Like yeah. That. Like honestly, like that's right. why I was saying like not like crazy loud, but I can see it. Yeah, but like you go on here at a distance. Okay. Um, you do notice that uh, some of the birds kind of flocked away, and everything else became a little quiet. But then the natural nature of sound turned maybe five minutes. By the way, t uh, uh. Stoblin, check your inspiration card. See it? Where's that at? I gave you right down your, your picture. Picture. Where's your picture. Like your camera of uh, yourself that you see on roll 20. <laughs> we can hear you still. Okay. Mm, I think. okay. That's pretty cool. You don't have to read it out loud, but let me know. Did you want to use the inspiration card? Otherwise, I'm going to continue on with the with the stuff. Can I? Oh, okay. Oh, do I have, do I have it right now? I can't save no, it for you later. Can, you can save it for later. You can you can hold up the three cards at a time. Hold on, I can or I can't. You can. You can. Okay, yeah, save for a later date. Okay. Um, also, are we allowed to, like, on the subject of the cards, are we allowed to trade cards or just provide cards to other people? You are. It's in the inspiration uh, uh, deck thing. Basically, it says everybody's losing connection. You can you can trade one card a session. Okay. I feel like my card is not valuable, so I almost want to give it, or for me at least, so I kind of want to give it to Clintonius, but I don't know if he wants it. Make a perception check, everybody. Perception. Uh oh. I see everything. Oh, yeah. Let me read what my card does, and then I'll trade it with you. I mean, if you want, you can just take my card, because my card is, like, not valuable to me. I got 21 total. I got a total of 8. Oh, wow. Uh, Larian immediately kind of grabs you all and begins dragging you to the to the tree. She goes, get to the tree line now! Now, we need cover! The beast, it flies! She points out from the... There's a little speck that darted immediately up from the stronghold, that, and, like into the cloud cover and you could see it dart in and out every now and then too far to see anything right now but you can it's like rapidly gaining and about it's about two to three hundred feet away in between the cloud cover like like dancing in between so you have, you have like difficulty seeing it and she goes look we have a choice we can attempt to fight it or walk up to whatever the hell its lair was up there we you need to make the decision now um i say go to its lair but then so it gets lair action so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was gonna you... say fight it out here in the open because if it's darting around through the trees, I don't want to fight it. No, in the through tree. the cloud, through the cloud. Like it's above right now through the cloud cover, and it's like coming to you. It's about 250 feet away because you're pretty close to the cloud cover, and you think it's about to start swooping down on you guys. It's a flying thing with claws. Is it a? Is it a rock? No, <laughs> it's a boulder. God. It's a boulder. Name, name Dwayne. It's a sea rock. Dwayne the Rock. It's a boulder. Okay, well, she's asking. Uh, Larry and literally, like, I mean, we got, her, like, I feel like we got one vote for each right now, so it's a double time. Who's stopping? I say, let's do it. Tommy, you can steal my card. I think it'll be more useful for you. Alright, sure. swap a room. I don't know which one it is, so. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess it's probably your first one, right? Yeah, Tommy, the chaotic swap. Fun. Okay. Let it go. Immediately, as, the, like, you can see the thing break cover and dive bomb incredibly fast you think this thing whatever it is it's got like a dive maneuver and it's able to just dive straight down to whatever the hell it's coming and you can see that this thing's massive as it's approaching you can see that it is 
quite large. You could now understand why the, the claw marks were so dangerous. And as this thing that you guys are beginning to take cover in the tree line, you like all get up behind, place yourselves here. You, as this thing is about to land, you can attempt to make a pot shot at it as it's beginning its dive bomb. It's still difficult to tell because it's moving pretty fast. You know, one turn, roll initiative, gentle, uh, and ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's get some combat music. Initiative. It doesn't matter what your initiative is, go first. Oh yeah, Forever. duh. <laughs> I go first. <laughs> Do I have combat? I should have. I got 10. Combat music. You have a goblin. <laughs> who's gonna... Oh, here we go. Gustavlin, Gust Gust stop the idle chatter. What are you talking about? I'm over here. Okay, prepare yourselves. P place your characters where you guys want to place them. I'm about to start the encounter. All right. I will be in the tree line here. I just don't want us all stacked up on top of each other in case. <laughs> Gustavlin is going to be on the open. Don't worry. Move, move, move yourself. Where are you moving, Gustavlin? As a dive bomb, I will just catch it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this thing's going to snatch this motherfucker and fly away. I'm are you I'm, I'm going to snatch him out the sky. Don't worry. Okay. Ah! Hey, are you actually going to stand and confront this thing? You got five seconds to respond. Five, four, okay. Oh, no. As it swoops down to get me, I'm gonna jump on its leg and then onto its back and then tame it. <laughs> That's the plan. All right. Oh my god, it's so fucking. It's not the plan, it's not it's the Grom plan. Point, it's Grom 2.0. <laughs> Chimera. Grom, it's your cousin. <laughs> Debbie? <laughs> Is that true, Debbie? What happened? <laughs> Who did this to you? <laughs> okay, I got a uh, ten. Ten total. I mean, I go first. I got okay, a you go also, first. But I don't have a plus to anything. Hang on, I gotta turn this battle music down. It's too much. It's going crazy right now. Okay, this gigantic creature just lands in front of you. It's got a barbed scorpion tail, the mane of a lion, giant teeth. All right, uh, as it's dive bombing, Stalos decided to stand out. It's going for first attack on you. Hey, I'll go first. I know, I know. Take, take your turn. As this thing lands, it kind of just skids right in front of you. All right, uh, well, my first move is to, is to snatch <laughs> Gustavlum and throw him into the freaking tree line so he's hidden. All right, make your movement. It's five foot square, so you run up to the you run up to the goblin. It's just me, 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 me. Can I use my reaction like, no, throw me above, throw me above it. <laughs> so you're yeah, just I'm saying that, right? I'm not going to throw you into the sky, dude. Then you're fucked. <laughs> into the sky, Clintonius, not jump on his back. No, no. I, I chuck him into the tree line. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's going to be plus four, plus my uh, gauntlets of ogre power. I don't know what those add. Uh, yeah, he's in the tree. Right. Literally grab him by like the head and like just chuck him like a football. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hey Arnold his ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gustavlin, you are away from the creature. Uh, right, that is your uh, standard action in your movie. You get a bonus. Bonus action rage. <laughs> Okay, Light, road, you stop. Uh, alrighty, I think I gotta add that. What do the gauntlets of Ogre Power add? Is it a plus two? I think it was. Your strength score becomes nine. Okay, that's what it was, yeah. Okay, uh, I got an 11, so this thing is gonna go, uh, let me see, it's going to go, Grom, what is your, what is your deck? Zero, so well, gonna, oh. Okay, so it's gonna go, it's gonna go, it's gonna now go, I think. Okay. So Stoblin is going, I don't know when, but not. Okay, this thing literally runs up, and as it looks at all of you, it's <laughs> And did Larian just stay out in the open? No, she's behind. I was about to say, I'm like, you dumb woman. <laughs> this was <Yeah>. your idea. <laughs> Definitely not. She was literally just like, no, I'm, I'm hype. Uh, okay, I get to roll attacks now. Are you ready? Have fun. Alrighty, sir. It's nice knowing you guys. <laughs> okay, first attack. Misses. Ha 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 ha. Oh, Hits. shit. Oh. <laughs> Plus seven. Uh, so as as it hits you with its claw, it literally goes <laughs> and rakes like the whole entire thing in front of you. <laughs> I take uh, pretty spicy damage, I would say. Uh, Whatever it is, it's half because I'm raging. Twelve, so six points of slashing damage. Yay! Uh, then you can see the stinger on its kind of thing grow a lot more barbs, and it just goes <laughs> and shoots them all out. God damn it! And like a cone. Uh, I need. Uh, no, I guess you guys. Every. I guess you're the only one that has to make the save. Make a dex saving throw, sir. Okay. 
can I? Um, actually, no, that would that would cost as a actually movement. Actually, pause. Hold on a second. Uh, pause. Okay, sorry. It's a different thing. I have to roll four contact for this one. Okay, so I'll hold off on the dex roll. I was hoping to use one of the bodies as a meat shield, but you know, guess they already <laughs> used my movement. <laughs> Okay, uh, it goes and like the volley immediately shoots out and all four spikes go and just hit you in the chest because you know you absorb everything with your chest. <laughs> oh. make, a, make a constitution saving throw for me. You only got to do a con save. Okay, whatever it is, it's like 24, I think. Make the con save as you feel like the poison <laughs> pulse a little bit, but you're able to kind of just take it as you're like pressing against all the barbs and trying to rip them out. Mm -hmm. uh, but the damage looks like it's going to be quite a bit. Take 44 points of damage half. You said 44? 44. Half, so <laughs> 22. 22, sir. Alrighty, that is its turn. Grom, you're up. This thing kind of just shoots out the volley, but the volley is now like a line because the only person that's not covered <laughs> Antonius. Uh, all right. So, uh, so I'll run up and I'll level here, uh, Clintonius. What does your cure wounds look like? I just put my paw on, on his holes, I guess, where the spikes <laughs> are. And Pats then, me uh, down. <laughs> yeah, holy warm, pat down. warmth ensues. Uh, I would say the, like, the light is more red, than, like orangish or so, as opposed to just like the standard white light. And then two of those plus my spell mod three plus three, so plus six of that, so you heal 18. Gladly take that <laughs> and then um <coughs> on. no that's terrible um and then i will um i guess bonus act i'm just gonna try to claw it since i'll get the plus five and i can actually probably hit it a hey, plus a billion like 24 take this d4 bitch <laughs> that's it plus strength i'm guessing so plus two so five five claw damage okay and then i'm just gonna shift around it so that claw spear doesn't uh, obliterate all of us okay uh gustavlin you're up bonus action what's that shit bard can do bardic inspiration clintonius <laughs> i pick up uh the nearest rock on the ground as as i can't use dagger and <laughs> i use my action to make an attack on this uh on this thing no! <laughs> and Go i'm ahead. gonna use my college of whispers feature uh psychic blade and okay. that expends another use of bardic inspiration but it adds 2d6 to the attack so uh you're not that kind of bard <laughs> i would <laughs> not one on the attack shit dude it's gonna hit me on the back of the head we roll uh, to confirm. We roll to confirm. Um, I don't add anything to no. a rock, right? No. Like, well, no, it should be. It should be. Deck, yeah, plus, but ten. Okay. You so hold, hurl hold on, the rock. Hold on, chill. Uh, ten plus three, so it's thirteen total. The the rock whizzes past everything into the trees, uh, with a bunch of goblin whispers and uh, and blasphemies and uh, vulgar language, and <laughs> into the stream. Okay, Larian. Uh, move me up threefold. Yes, sir. As I. As I am you walk through a tree. <laughs> I like Rome all the time. Okay. Uh, Larian kind of looks at you and she's going to cast mage armor on you. Clintonius, you can okay. see a sec, uh, she says, and a second later, you feel kind of ethereal armor uh, spawn around you. Add plus two to your, because I think okay. it's, what's, what's your AC normally? 13. 13. So now it's 14 plus plus dex plus con. Okay. Plus dex plus con. Yeah, it should be. That should be. We'll do that. Base, a, base AC is 13 plus dex. Okay. Technically, you're not supposed to be able to stack it, but I don't really care. We bend the rules a little bit here. Okay. So... It is now 16. Yes, sir. So you are no longer wearing. Uh, and with her offhand, she kind of swirls around, takes out a little dagger, and she just, uh, uh, she just repositions herself like in a more safer position. She's, you know, probably weighs like 140 pounds soaking wet, maybe, mm -hmm. and is an elf. So she weigh, like actually weighs probably that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find no. Okay, top of the round, it is you, Clintonius. What are you doing? Uh, I am going to stab at it with my big ass trident. Yeah, go ahead and make your two attacks or your one attack. Got you attack. Uh, you. Seventeen plus six. That hits. Yeah, he's gonna be taking a D6 plus four. I mean, plus six, cause uh, I'm enraged and shit. So that's gonna be five plus four, nine. Nine damage. Nine and damage, sir. Bonus okay, action, go. since I hit it with a melee attack, I get to grapple it. I'm gonna attempt to grapple it. Uh, Okay, yeah, go ahead, make your athletics check. All right. It's gonna, it's um, gonna your what, athletics what check with another athletic. What, what size would you say this is, this creature? Huge. Okay, so I could grapple. <laughs> it, it 
might it will break it it will break your grapple with just a standard action well what if i take my um potion of hill giant strength you probably you might be able to do it you both got 17. the grapple is like you just literally slam yourself into it and like you're like Argh! like literally it looks like a greek myth almost as you see like on the <laughs> side of the mound as like you guys are fighting this thing and like the scene just hits just right with the race mm. and you're just like on this thing's main trying to get a good grasp on it and just right. snapping let me roll for it that's gonna be 18 plus you said strength yes well it's your athletics whatever your athletics oh athletics sorry um athletics is going to be plus six so 24. Plus inspiration. Okay, yeah, plus able... his inspiration what is okay. that a d6 yeah roll a d6 let's see the six so 30. <laughs> yeah this is i am greek mythology incarnate right now <laughs> uh yeah you're able to actually grapple it like like as it attempts to snap its mouth and like the stinger kind of attempts to hit you in the claws you like jump on top of its head and like like just press with your legs and like and you actually get like a vulnerable like spot you think and you manage to close its snout and like like you're like on top of like the back of its mane and like like close like you have your spear or your uh trident like this to its snout and you're just like able to hold on back. hell yeah it's like trying to swipe you off uh that's it's turned now yeah that's that's my turn uh make an athletics check to see if you could if if, if you can contest against me uh, if it could get you off okay uh that's gonna be <laughs> plus c still so 15. should be right i should i should have a plus it says a three yeah well a three plus nine it should be 12. oh hang, hang on hang on i got advantage on strength uh checks and saves so i'm gonna roll Ready? one more time dang it all right it's okay it's, the, it's oh. still gonna be it's gonna be uh 17 total okay so as you're on top of this thing, it uses its standard action to like rip you off because it's huge and you, it breaks open and snaps its mouth. And like you are just on top of its like mane as this thing's trying to like swipe at you. Um, it's going to begin flying away. What? <laughs> it, it, seeing that like you are a lot stronger and like it immediately just attempted to dive bomb, hit whatever the weakest player, it could, like person it could have just snatched him off. Because remember this thing, you, you get the feeling this thing is like a, like a hunting monster. Like it drops in, gets something immediately, sees if we get, like, like do something. And the fact that you guys all hit it like three times so far, in the first two seconds of combat and it didn't kill you it's like it's probably gonna attempt oh, uh, you are like on the top of its mane like grabbing with with your big furball hands as this thing's beginning to gain altitude grom you get an attack off the um one. i have war casters so i will just try to sacred flame okay it's a deck save yeah which i don't know if it worked with grapple like, i don't know how this all works since it's flying now but mm -hmm. it so failed it failed so roll fired it thanks it's pretty good <laughs> Okay, uh, so this thing has climbed now 30 feet. Damn, round already? Ah! Uh, round two, sorry, it probably climbed. I know it, it climbed 50 feet. In uh -oh. yes, this is what we were worried about with Gustavlin out in the open. And, but instead you guys caught it. So this thing is 50 feet in the air right now as as it's beginning to climb. Who turns it? Should uh, be either. After its turn, I think it's mine. Oh, mine was an attack of opportunity, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, I was checking the range on that. I'm going to, um, as long as it's still just going like vertically up, more so just to, like, it's not like in the tree line yet, I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt on it so okay. I can see it. Okay, go ahead, make your attack. Oh, my game's lagging. That's just five plus whatever attack is. Uh, it looks like plus four, so nine probably missed. It misses the, the crackle of, of, of arcane or divine energy just flies wide into the thing's sky. Uh, Gustavlin, you're up. That's right, you better run away, cookie! And, uh, I cast vicious mockery. Okay, uh, wisdom saving throw. Yes, sir. Uh, it makes a save. God damn. damn. God damn. All right, what's Larian doing? Seeing the fact that you're still on it, she goes, drop down into the tree line, leave it. Leave it, we can catch it later. You're not gonna fight this thing one-on-one -on -one in the air. Drop down. That's um, all she does? Uh, with that, she Because <laughs> <laughs> he yells at me, like I can fucking hear her. Uh, she hurls two little fire bolts and they whiz past uh, to the tree line. Okay. Uh, top of the round. <laughs> you are up, Clintonia. This thing is gaining altitude incredibly quickly. Not with me on its back. I'm jumping off. <laughs> <laughs> as you kind of, you wrestle for it for a second as it's like snarling and it's like, like flapping its wings. You literally kind of tuck and roll off the side and just like kick off with your feet and begin to uh, fall down. Are you aiming for the, make the an acrobatics check for me? <laughs> what? Shit. Aim for the bushes. Yeah, aim I'm trying trees, to. Bro. Oh no. No, bro. from the other guys, you gotta aim for Oh the no, it's just a 10 flat. <laughs> it's a 
10 flat. Okay. But every damage I'm taking, it's half. <laughs> okay, uh, 50 feet. Uh, you could, you'll probably hit just the, uh, it's gonna be one these Make an athletics check to see if you could grapple the, one of the, one of the trees. Okay. To see how well you can grab. Uh, that's gonna be 16 total. Okay, you don't take any damage. You, like, slam into the tree and quickly curl, curl around, like, like, <laughs> As as the tree literally goes and like, <laughs> like this, uh, its turn. Uh, it kind of turns around. As it turns around, it goes and shoots out a couple of barbed spikes at you. Oh, damn! How far does the cone reach? Because I'm 50 feet plus away from it. No, it. It's it's not shooting a cone. It's doing a direct. Oh, okay. It looks like it's got a long, long range. Okay. Well, 17 hits because AC is 16. Uh, take eight points of piercing damage. Half. <clears throat> Half. Uh, with that, it quickly swoops away and begins to dart off into the thing. Uh, 50 feet of movement, and now it's like diagonally climbing, so I'm not gonna do the whole entire Pythagorean theorem. You guys get one more round to attempt to attack it or do whatever before it's up. Although it looks like it's making its way towards the Okay, I, I, is it still my turn? Or I jumped off, right? That was my turn. Yeah, yeah, uh, it is Grom's turn. I'll just shoot a sacred flame. Well, like, I, I don't think I have anything that could reach it. Sacred flame is only 60 feet, and that thing is probably like 100 now. Mm -hmm. I can shoot a crossbow bolt, but I need the god shot, so I'm chill. I'll go check on uh, uh, Clintonius to make sure make sure you don't have any crazy. Okay, I'm just Stop hanging it. from the tree like Tarzan, man. Clintonius, <laughs> throw me, throw me! <laughs> no, I'm not checking you in the air. He's literally hanging like this off the top off the top <laughs> of the tree. I jump off the tree. I jump off of Clintonius, and then I whack. <laughs> And vicious mod. Okay. Uh, wisdom, saving throw. Throw. wisdom saving throw. Go. It is proficient in it. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, it didn't hurt him, but like. It he hurt felt him. it. He knows he's a bitch. <laughs> he knows. He heard my, he heard my tone of voice. <laughs> Blow that. Come back. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I just asked if you Oh my god. Uh, you see Larian go and two little fire bolts, and then she chucks them both. She it hits. It on it? I don't know what happened, but she hits it for 20 points of damage. Damn. As literally the two bolts kind of streak, and they're like little meteorites that you off in the distance as this thing banks. It looks like two little missiles go and explode on off, and it kind of veers like this and pulls up into the clouds and uh, going towards the stronghold. But as it got hit, you hear it go. <laughs> I heard. That was fucking right. Dang, Larian, you had that in the back pocket this whole time. Why is that from the store? <laughs> Just... Women are dumb. <laughs> Can't say that. We're gonna get demonetized. <laughs> Man, we ain't making no money anyways. I, I know this is true. Women are dumb. <laughs> uh, with that, combat seems to kind of uh, die down as this thing flees off into the distance and uh, Clint, Clintonius, you begin to climb down. Uh, as you climb down, you feel the spikes just kind of oozing out and you begin to like tuck them out and they're they're a little painful to take out. It looks like they have like a little barb that like tries to hook in, but with, but you're able to like dislodge it. It, it paints not a, it's not a nice little sit down. Little right, I have, I have Grom gonna... help me out because I don't know how to take these things out. Grom, after you pull that out of Clintonius, can I have the... <laughs> uh, isn't this considered a dagger? No, uh, daggers are made of metal. This will then, replace that. <laughs> then I will not give it because you be a dumb. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, maybe if you're good, I'll give them to you later. Please, grow! <laughs> Please! Please! I just continue to place them in my bag of holding. And <laughs> um, dexterity? Can I, okay, well, can I try to crawl into his bag? What the fuck? Bro, uh, you have a bag of holding too! You're just gonna you yeah. Duke us, black hole us! <laughs> I'm not thinking of the fucking consequence here. <laughs> okay, okay uh, I'm gonna say no, you're not a tiger. As you attempt to just literally, you're like literally trying to hop into his pocket, like not even hold the pocket, you're trying to like dive into the pocket. He literally just like pushes you off. Um, Larry yeah, kind of looks, looks make, an, make a dexterity check if you yeah. can do it. <laughs> If you're all natural one, I'm portal hole. I'm going campaign. Man. <laughs> do I just, do I just say one? Um, five plus. Uh, okay, you, you you're not able to do it. Uh, La Larian walks up and like begins helping you guys out. But as she's like like surveying the like landscape, you know, trying to figure out what's going on, she kind of looks at you guys and she goes, "Is this common for you all to just I don't know somehow fuck it all up but make it work?" I don't no, but sometimes Clintonius and Grom kiss when no one's looking. <laughs> you see her elven eyes literally go wide for a split second. She goes, well, that shit well, was so left field. My deception is also a plus. <laughs> She's so stunned. At this she, she actually just she goes, oh, well, I suppose there's nothing wrong. No, don't believe her. <laughs> 
<laughs> she looks at you, she goes, oh, we, we, should, we should just hurry up and attempt to figure out what that is now. Um, look, you, guys, you, you three are wild, but somehow you were able to fight off uh, whatever that creature was. I guess I helped too, but you took a whole entire volley of fights from me. Are you sure you're okay, Quintonia? Yeah, I'll be all right. As I just flex my pecs. <laughs> They'll shoot out. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's what's the plan now? Do we track it down to its lair or up the stronghold? I say we go back and give the information about what this thing is. Yeah, yeah, they just destroy. said to gather the information on what is attack Trout. Yeah. Oh. Think about it. We don't have to kill it. We just need to gather information on it. And then whoever that uh, slave master is will reap his full uh, punishment. Okay, uh, I would agree with that, but you're not a little bit curious about where this thing lodges or why it attacks or where its lair is or anything? like. Yeah, it's a wild animal. The wild animals do wild animal shit. And it's true, they do do wild animal. Get it? Do do shit? <laughs> they mean do things. I I, I, I got it. You goblins are seriously ill creed mind. I understand. Your 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 poop jokes are not tolerated here, okay? <laughs> so we just she kinda looks she goes, I'm okay with returning, but I think we could take it. What? Did you not see me get shot full of barbs? <clears throat> And you, you look fine. I'm okay, roll. but I'm not great. <laughs> he's gonna roll an insight. He's gonna roll a medicine therapy. I could therapy. be better. <laughs> uh, how hurt are you? What's your HP at? HP currently guys... is at 31 out of 45. But that was after he healed me fucking 2d8. I was at 15 for a minute. I think we could be on ourselves a little bit more or something. We could try. Like... It's your call though. I, I'm, I'm okay with heading back. If you don't want to be a pin cushion anymore. Fine. Well, I mean, unless you want to get chock full of barbs and slashes. Clintonius, let's just go before I tell her your other secret. What other secret? You really want me to expose Clintonius? <sighs> Gustavlin, I saved your life in front of these judges and you're over here airing out my dirty laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I need more more stingers. Grom won't give me the stingers. <laughs> Grom, can you give him one stinger? Just one, Grom. Oh, he literally just blatantly lied to everybody here. <laughs> I know, it's but she <laughs> believes it. <laughs> I mean, personally, I don't care if she believes it, but I mean, I literally said if he behaves, then I'll give him, and he's not. <laughs> Maybe I'd be nicer, Grom. If you were nicer to me. I okay. mean. What you you talk a lot, but all you did was throw a rock into a pond. I could have done that. <laughs> I just start walking away. Oh shit, that's, that's so true. This roomy, I was gonna pull it to the ground. I can't speculate on what. Gustavlin, I barely could handle it with all of my strength. You see how I didn't get hit either? Yeah, that's right. That's Bro. right. Bro. That's <laughs> poor Jarrell. Poor Jarrell. Literally <laughs> just made a pick of his face. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta heal this guy. Like, <laughs> like, I, re I really real. am Clint 2.0 right now. <laughs> I, I gotta heal Gustav when he chooses to try to catch a chimera like four times the size of him. <laughs> Two lefts don't make a right, Grom. Remember no, that. Wait, wait, wait. If they Plus do, three don't right they? Make a left. What? No, she, bro, as you, you just end up going the other way. <laughs> as you guys are walking off, she goes, but the straw, the. The stronghold's right. We know where it's at. We can come back later. I work with coward. I just, <laughs> I want to gag freaking Gustavlin's mouth and just walk away with him because this dude is talking mad shit right now. <laughs> Are you gonna... Okay, um, all right, so, so you guys begin walking back. As you guys begin walking back the, the road and everything, it takes you a full entire day as you guys are hoofing it to make it to a part of civilization in the kingdom of Chisanta. And then another day basically passed as all kind of happening and you're briskly walking and you begin to approach the gates of Heptio. Damn, Grom, they have a statue of you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let me, let me, uh, write this stuff down. Oh, As, that's called a she mm. <laughs> What was that, Gustavlin? <laughs> I take out the gag from his mouth. Now he's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I have nothing to say. <laughs> okay, you guys begin to kind of approach the general vicinity of, uh, nice 
after. Go use the bathroom real quick. Well, 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 it's just wrong. What are uh, you gonna do? Varian comes up behind you and she goes, you do know I'm here too, right? Pokes you in the back of the head. She goes, you do know, like with her long elven finger, you do know I'm here, right? What, what is seriously wrong with you? Are you goblins all like this? I think like what? Kind of like what? Insane. What? Racist, racist, racist. So you hear a passerby walk by, typical elf, huh. and they walk to you walking, and she looks at you, and she looks at the- Yeah, typical. Better than this stuff, she looks at you. You, you're gonna get us into a lot of trouble. You're funny. Me or you... Brom? Brom is kind of the trouble, I get it. She, she points, she points to you. No, you. Me? Yes, you. Throw yourself into the pond and be rid of her. Hold on, am I going into the pond? Like my attitude or like go into the pond and you're gonna leave? She goes, I have the grom. How do you reach this goblin? How do you, you, you adventured with him before? How? Dude. Yeah, How? I saved his He's life very time. short so I can reach him. Um, uh, you guys are back at the gates. There seems to be a couple guards here and there and people walking around. Uh, what do you do to head back straight to the temple? Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. have no other place to be. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Gustavo, you were asleep. Whoa, the... what are those? You, you were asleep for this part, so I got to paint you. Uh, this is the Hall of Judge. You can tell you are inside the Temple of Judge. Uh, this specific temple functions as both as tri uh, trifecta. It functions as a courthouse. You can see in the middle here, it seems to be like a like an open mall slash like public area, but there's court information and everything like kind of sprawled out. Sitting on two pillars, on the on the right seems to be uh, Andro Sphinx and on the left would be a gyno, gyno. And there seems to be a cone of silence kind of in the ger general vicinity where people are presenting their case. Uh, <clears throat> you see that there's a bunch of people just sitting around like listening and, and watching this whole entire thing. There's a table that seems to be in front made of perfect marble and a bunch of stuff is on it and there's a clerk there to your left hand side in this general vicinity seems to be a broth and to your right hand side up here in this kind of uh, uh area with a bunch of statues and everything you see that this seems to be the temple itself so this is the trifecta it functions as a courthouse a temple and a broth a brothel that's what right. i said a broth. <laughs> wow <laughs> are those are right. these statues just like there? Are they alive? Which ones? These well, ones? Like the people, the sphinxes? Yeah. Walk up and talk to them. See, you see they're they're literally moving and talking. And as you begin to walk up, Larry literally grabs you by the like scruff of your neck and she goes, you best be careful. Those are the judge saying anything Oh, don't. wow. For the morning, get it. She, she kind of lets you go and she goes, you know what? Excuse Fine. me, coming through. I start cutting in line. Important goblin business. Hey, you right there. And, and, and you really just walk into like the, the, the cone of silence as you walk in and you, you huh. hear... You hear somebody go, you see this man, he stole from me. I want my, and then, and then as you walk in, it shuts up and both eyes glow and they look at you. How do you, I would just like to make introductions. I am Goblin, Gustavlin, the Goblin, um, and I live here now. Okay, bye. You walk out, <laughs> they, 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 they look slight, um, as you walk out, everybody's just kind of looking at the little Goblin. Uh, a few moments later, you can tell that the, the, the verdict has been reached uh, about the tax and the payment of whatever it was that was occurring and you are now stepping up as the judges kind of beckon you forward and you step into this kind of strange little pool of uh, serenity and easeness past the marble stone and the first judge speaks the andro sphinx what have you found present thy crest oh so we skipping the line too absolutely oh heck yeah uh larian walks up and she literally kind of <clears throat> and like and rips the necklace off and places it down in front of them and they like it lifts up and the little kind of uh, necklace glows for a split second and like coils round and then it drops down. And the gyno sphinx talks. She goes, very interesting. We have deciphered enough. As per our agreement, the slave master will be put in chains himself and until he has worked off his debt, he shall have to pay it. Now, subject of this creature clanging the countryside, are you able to dispose of it? We will pay a hefty amount of coin for it. You don't have huh. to talk about Grom like that. It's little gob music. I like how much for it? I like you. Um, 20. Five, five gold. 20,000 gold. Cash up front. She, uh, the, the two Sphinx Sphinxes laugh and they go, we will give you a thousand gold right now. I said 20. He's not for sale. I'm for sale. What do you 10, mean? 000. Everything is for sale. That is the currency of this reality. Everything. I agree. The Andrew Sphinx chime. Uh, I speak for myself. 20. 20. <laughs> And you 20, must abide 000? by my schedule. I am allowed at the brothel at the brothel at all times. I will sing you a little song. And, uh, you gotta feed me like whenever I want. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand, you say? Yeah. Uh, their eyes light up. Gustavlin, what they are you gonna do anything. with twenty thousand gold if you're their slave? I'm not their. They're, I'm gonna be more like a companion. And but yeah, you have to give me like pets and. Uh, you realize they're owning whatever they wish. No, but you can't do anything weird. <laughs>
Like, if I say no, you have to abide by the wrong. A second later, they blink and their eyes light up, and, and you see uh, 20,000 silver. I said gold. You said 20,000, yeah. I said and gold. You said early, I said gold. Enough. You will take the money, or you will stop your incessant annoyance. Those are the rules. Well, if it's 20,000 gold, we have a deal with 20,000 silver. We don't have it. They look at you in their eyes. They're, they're no longer kind of blue. They're glowing bright white, like with almost high. I, I gag Gustavlin again. It's no it makes me <laughs> Larian kind of just looks at all the, the 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 clown fiesta that is occurring here and she goes all right well i suppose um i would personally sell she looked but i don't sell because of the other two they want him on team regardless uh want is a weird <laughs> look i don't speak for you it just seems that you have some dynamic going on and he has dirt on you maybe so maybe that's why kind of uh, lift up her hand. Look, I don't judge. I understand. Yep. He doesn't yeah. have any dirt on us. No, I do. So you're... <laughs> <laughs> if anyone, he's the one that has dirt on. <laughs> anyway. Um, do we take... To the answer your question, um, we can handle it, but... You literally just couldn't handle You got scared. You got hit one time and you walked away. I, um, I request aid in this battle, I guess. Aid? What aid shall you need? You Wait. are all the aid that is needed. I need extra people. That's what aid means. At least a few of your guards. Looks like you have plenty to spare. They're just sitting in the broth. You, you look over and one guy is like lifting up like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> or even, um, I pulled a couple of the barbs from the creature that, um, we may need some poison. <clears throat> mm. Present the bar. Present thy bar. And a guy just takes a step forward and she begins to uh, kind of like sits up like the stone crumbling off her and she goes a little bit as she looks at you, Grom. I pull them out of my bag. They kind of almost get tucked away by a little bubble of some kind of magic and they get lifted up and as they get lifted up, they're like moved around. Just I suspect a manticore. One of great size. This specimen seems to be quite old. I give at least 115 years. Really? 150? Aye. A little younger, but he is correct. It is a dire specimen. Quite large. Probably lost its mind at some point. So I have no idea, but for us, if you sure, scribe. We can offer four of so of our finest guards to aid you in the quest. And the poison resistance? You don't have manticore <laughs> resistant or antidote? <laughs> antidote? We will, we will provide... Anti, they will only give edge against you said before. This creature is quite old and therefore quite powerful. Probably got away with most of its hunting and capabilities due to the sheer amount of cunning it had. Be forewarned. Mm. Um, four guards will be ready at your detachment at your uh, first call. She, she, the crest uh, of judgment lands back in Larian's hand and they go, now go. You make request the god, uh, the guards through the crest and then they will come to you uh, near the, near the edge of the city, out to the gate. Prepared. This battle will be hard won. Promise thing will not go down um whoever whichever guard you send us make sure you don't send us that guy and i point to the guy who held up his pint who was hanging out in the brothel uh <laughs> you can't see him anymore he seems to have gone back behind the curtain all right <laughs> wonder what he's doing back there uh, strip he's putting, club, on his ass. Armor, he's putting on lotion <laughs> bro he's, he's... Help us. <laughs> uh okay what are you guys gonna do now it seems that after a few moments you see a couple ladies in togas and you know the uh a blue kind of sprigs of of vegetation come by and they offer you some anti- Hey bud, how are you? Where were you born and how were you born? She looks at you and she goes, Goblin speak. I did not know this. <laughs> <laughs> and she like gingerly like hands you like the 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 pottery and you kind of hear all the <clears throat> all the little uh, anti-talk uh, pouches inside of it. Mm. Uh, and you kind of look at them and you see four pouches of anti-toxin and Varian looks at it and Grom, you inspect the two. Do you think these would be like powders that you like mix into like water? Wow. Okay, but where were you born? Just <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> 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 fucking scampers off. Um, Larian looks at all of you guys. She goes, "What? What now? Uh, do we call the guards? Do we immediately head out?" No, we plan an attack. Since you over here making fun of our plans of attack, we have four guards. You wrestled the thing almost to the ground, and I almost scorched it with an attack. Yeah. So why <laughs> were you making fun of us? I make fun of you because she points to you three, and she goes, "Because of this, your <laughs> dynamic is all I don't know, weird. I can't, can't, can't." Explain. She kind of raises her. I have no idea anymore. You don't forget I said anything. I apologize. Okay. I'm gonna go to the brothel. Bye. No. <laughs> <laughs> you are grappled by Clintonius. <laughs> oh, we fight. No, I'm not. Yeah, no. We could fight then, dude. I'm, I'm grappling your ass. All right, all right. Roll, roll, uh, roll a thing. You test me. Make an yeah. athletics. Check. Make an athletics check. Uh, uh, Clintonius. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and Gustavo, make an acrobatics check. Ten total. <laughs> <laughs> He 
he's just squirming. Like, like, ah, ah, he's ah. he's ah. literally being dragged away like by the like scruff of his neck as he's going like this. <laughs> I'm making a fuck. <laughs> he's like walking in air. Like thinks he's walking away. He's like you can't stop me. Thinks I'm walking grabbing away. whatever I can on the way out. If it's movable, I'm pocket. Uh, it, you are like your fingers are easily like pried off by the giant furball fingers, and you are out in front of the of the fucking of the temple of judges. Why would you do that? You're my funny guy. Huh? We have stuff to do, Gustavo. Looking me. Your mockery does not does not work on me anymore. Because it wasn't vicious. <laughs> it was just to be hurtful. <laughs> It was hurtful mockery, not vicious. <laughs> Stupid man, bear pig. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Lar Larian kind of sits down one of the t uh, one of the benches uh, near some uh, terrace kind of little garden statues, and she goes, "Well, you gonna judge up a plan?" Well, I guess let's go march back to the stupid manticore if we just left there. We're gonna have to go do it again. That's a plan. She looks at you two, Clintonius, Grom. Yes. <clears throat> Clintonius has to take a nap because he's hurt. Yeah, no. I just I just need a short short respite. No, let's just do this tomorrow, Clintonius, because because you need to sleep. You walked back for two uh, two days. You gotta. Oh, walk. yeah. Okay, never mind. Oh. Uh, am I at full health? Yes, sir. Cool. I'll take that. Myself. It took us two days too. Why do we just sleep in the forest? Because there's a dire manticore out there. You guys are literally half animals. <laughs> <laughs> we would have been fine in the forest. You're half creature. Relax. Oh my god. <laughs> it's uh, I'm. I'm. I'm with. I'm with Gustavo on this one. Vulgar as he is, I think we should have just stayed out there and tracked it down. Now Clintonius has to carry me all the way back and walk there again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 um, but I have a question. What's how are we gonna actually fight? That's we a good question. The, we have the guards, but to be honest, what are the guards gonna do besides buy us maybe ten seconds? Let's be real. I've seen the guards fight. They're capable, but they're not capable of handling that thing. And the barb. I'm pretty <clears> sure the caravan has plenty of guards walking around with them, and th hmm. they're probably skewered shish kebab. <laughs> ten seconds is two rounds of combat. It's plenty. <laughs> rounds of combat you know what that makes sense for some reason that makes perfect sense think right that's, that's what i thought too give me one second uh create a plan to see if you guys can figure out something Grom, I think you're the leader, so you have to make the plan. When did I become the leader? Well, because when the real leader died, and then it was just, you know, us. The other guys might be somewhere, but I don't know. Well, I guess for a plan, bring out bait, poison it, or sedate it with something. That way we get the drop when it goes back to layer. Interesting. Just like love to eat. Uh, pretty much, I don't know what you meet, I guess. I can't, I um, kind of eat whatever I find sometimes. Sometimes grass, sometimes leaf. Um, whole yeah, meals are preferred, but like... I saw you eat that young beetle that one time, so... Yeah, that was actually pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, when you eat a lot of, like, uh, vegetables and grass and stuff, you gotta eat some rocks, too, just to help it, like, you know, pass and digest. You're, you eat stone. Well, no, cause, cause, yeah, to help break down, to help grass. Not stones, but like rocks. <laughs> Okay, uh, you can, you kind of decided on a plan. Is that the execution of the plan? You guys going to attempt to get some meat, poison it, and then uh, head up there? Um, then maybe get a net, try to keep it on the ground. Oh, that's a pretty <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you, you just sound like Towelie too much. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to think if I should call it now because sleep clock and, and I do have some chores to figure out if I should, what, what we should do. The session got cut in half. It kind of makes sense. I mean, you guys accomplished what you were meant to do, and then you guys are gonna go hunt the manticore. We, we, we can take it. We can take it to a vote. Otherwise, we might have to take a bit of a break. This was uh, we'll see. Also, just for clarification, the reason we did it this way, we get double the rewards now. All right. Sorry. What I missed. Uh, we're deciding if we want to uh, cut the session now and then and then because like I, I have a little bit of plan right ahead so you guys are tech got a little bit but um i essentially go do stuff before i get yelled at and it's nine o'clock so i'm trying to figure out what the, what the plan is we could take a tow boat otherwise uh if you guys want to continue playing i could you could do one more encounter and we're paid essentially yeah. we're paid, and then uh what we can call it there because it's already like nine o'clock i mean i can go find the medical room. it'll be real quick let me tell you well, now we got food and a net, little rocks to help me digest my- Sure, add I, uh, that, let me add that real quick. Uh, uh, stuff to hunt. Man, so my plan, uh, 
Clintonius would uh, get some meat or something mm -hmm. and uh, just sedate it or poison it or something. And then also have like a, a net to try to like throw over it so it can't just fly away every time. Mm. <clears throat> that sounds like, like a good plan. Then, yeah, net it and then try to fight it. Okay. Can you also put down the little rock? What is up with you and these little rocks? They help me digest my... He eats rock. What? <laughs> Sometimes like, there's a lot of grass and rocks to help out. Ugh, the things I don't need to know. Look, um... It, it's, it's pretty simple, Goblin and Adam. Pretty simple. Sure, I guess that's canon now. <laughs> Do, do you have like two stomachs and one of them is your rock stomach and the other one's your stomach? Like, I, no, one do they stomach. come? Do they come out whole still? I just I... one stomach and goblins have little teeth and uh, shorter digestive tracts. You know. Would you need longer digestive tracts for stones? But uh, okay, um, <laughs> we're gonna have to call it here. Okay. Uh, my dog is barking, uh, basically. So what'd you guys, what'd you guys think of the session? We should probably have like a fill out table tracking thing for, for our stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, next session, we'll hopefully be able to get it rolling and get right into the swing of things. If you guys want, we could start at seven. So uh, Robo can immediately start and we could go into the thing. You guys finished about 75%, 75 to 80, 75 to 80% of the, maybe a little bit less. So like I would say seven, you're like two, two thirds, mm -hmm. three quarters, maybe somewhere in between there of the of the session would the full session just be this encounter no it would not <clears throat> okay uh no yeah i liked it nine out of ten for me nine yeah good role yeah. play good action nice background building i guess world build put that in the chat okay. uh see if you can get a log of the things that we should uh do in terms of like improvements and like we'll actually try to see screw the stuff uh, i'm gonna try to see if we can get a google uh google kind of review thing where mm -hmm. people can post it a google form and we can do that otherwise i thought it was a pretty good session uh i'm real sorry that we had to uh i love you bailey i love you i truly do but i gotta you gotta give me like two more minutes uh and essentially B basically, if you guys would have went up to the tower and started fighting the, the Manticore and everything, it would have been a little bit quicker. You guys would have been on the right, uh, like, but that's fine. I think this was the smarter play. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, like I said, uh, typical, typical planning. I plan a lot. I'm like, I have a lot planned. And then like, I go like, I'm like, this should be just the perfect amount of time to be able to play with all my homies and everything. And then it turns up. Mm -hmm. uh, so I may, may have to trim it down a little bit, but I thought it was, I thought it was good. You guys are pretty good. Uh, I'd love the role playing. I thought the world building is pretty far. I've been, I don't know if it's noticeable, but I've thrown my arm into the box. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I guess that's it. Drell, you can sign us off, sir. Call right. it. Cool. I will stop Absolutely. recording.